Yo, can you use a coaster? Mm-hmm. Thank you. We should get a coaster holder. Yeah. Or we could just make one. Yeah, that sounds fun. We are going to be casting a home for this stack of coasters out of cement. We're gonna be doing some CAD modeling, some 3D printing, some silicone mold making, and finally a bunch of cement casting. First step is to get dimensions of the stack of coasters, basically just diameter and height of the stack. Then we jump into CAD, I'm using Fusion 360, and make some prototypes, and then send the winners off to the 3D printer. So I came up with a couple of different designs that I was interested to see as physical objects. The one that I decided to move forward with is the sort of more traditional look. I made sure that the coasters fit in nicely. I was happy with the tolerances on the side and the height and thickness of the walls. I actually tweaked it slightly. I made the walls a little bit thicker and the wall height a little bit higher, but otherwise the final design looks much like this prototype. The next step is to hop back into CAD and create a mold box. So basically all the mold box needs to do is hold the liquid silicone around the master form, which is the coaster holder, until it cures into our rubbery mold. To do this, I took the modified prototype design and stuck it onto a plate. Then I added some sides to keep the silicone in. I also added a top, and this isn't totally necessary, but I thought it would be nice to save some silicone by taking up space at the center of the form. And I figured it would also make the mold more flexible, so getting the cement castings out would be a bit easier later on. Here's the plan. We're gonna seal up the mold box, then pour the silicone in and wait for that to cure. Then we'll deconstruct the mold box and we should have a nice mold of the master form. All we have to do then is turn it upside down, pour cement into it, wait a little bit, pop it out of the mold and voila, we have a coaster holder. It's kind of a lot of steps and if that was confusing, I promise it's gonna make more sense soon. All right, let's print out these parts and put together the mold box. So here is the base plate of the mold box. I printed this in a PVB, which has generally very similar properties to PLA, which is what this is printed in, with one key difference that we took advantage of here, which is that it's soluble in isopropyl alcohol. So I smoothed this. A few different ways to do this. One common method is to spritz it with isopropyl alcohol. Totally works. Another method is to put it inside of a container with like a paper towel or a rag soaked in isopropyl alcohol and let the vapors dissolve it, works really well. What I actually ended up doing was creating a really thin piece of PVB by extruding just a single layer, cutting it into pieces, and then dissolving that in a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, which I then painted on here. And I did three layers of that, and it gave me a really nice finish. It's got still got some texture to it, but the layer lines are basically gone. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's like a kind of a shiny luster to it as well, which made the demolding of the silicone for this piece specifically, pretty easy. All right, so this is nicely dried up. So I'm going to assemble and seal it up with hot glue. Time to glue it up. Doesn't need to look pretty, um, but we definitely want it to be pretty silicone tight when we pour the liquid silicone in so that we don't get leakage and end up with a hole where we're losing silicone and the mold gets shorter and makes a mess. I think this should do the trick. I'm gonna hit this with some mold release just to get it to be a little easier to come out of the mold. The next step is actually pouring the silicone into the mold box. I used a Smooth-On Mold Star 30. Those two parts get mixed together. When you're mixing silicone, you want to go gently to limit the introduction of air into the mixture, but you also want to mix very, very thoroughly. You want a homogenous mix of part A and part B by the end of it. As I pour the silicone in the mold box, you can see I'm starting from the bottom sides of the mold box and letting that flow up into where the coasters actually go. The reason for this is to avoid trapping air, so the air kind of gets pushed up by the rising liquid rather than having silicone cascading down the edges and potentially trapping air. It's been about 12 hours since we poured our silicone into the mold box and the silicone is cured. So we are going to move on to the next step, which is getting our silicone mold out of our mold case. So let's find out how we did. Uh, 
I'm digging out infill and hopefully we can wiggle out the top part once this is all cut out. Obviously that did not go quite as planned and we've made a huge mess uh, and the top and sides of the mold case are completely destroyed, but it looks okay. And I think I've got some ideas on how to do that a little differently next time, but I still have the base plate slash master in the mold and I wanna be really careful getting this off. Up until now, this part of the silicone is really just the outside of the mold and the inside is still inside. So let's try to get that off. I'm gonna clean up first. Okay, so we're back and I've done a bit of a tidy up and I'm feeling pretty confident. So let's see. Okay, well that was easy. Good start. Let's keep that going. Okay, got my thumb with it. I'm gonna go around. Hey! Okay, so it actually looks pretty good, I think. I don't see too many bubbles at all. Couple, but I think they're under the surface. And actually, despite that being uh, a bit of a failure in terms of the box design. That mold looks pretty good, and I think that this is going to work. I think this is going to work really well. <laughs> Let's get some cement in here, see what happens. Okay, so we are ready to do our first cement casting. A couple of things to go over before we do that. I had intended to use the top from the mold case to support the base of this. You can see there's like a little bit of flex here from where we hollowed it out. So I had intended to put the top back on the bottom of it now, uh, flip it upside down and have that be nice and supported. Obviously that's not really an option anymore because this is our top. So instead of printing a new one, I'm just gonna go for it and hope for the best. I think with this little pillar here, we have enough support. There may be some slight distortion to it, but it's not, it's a coaster holder. So I don't think that's really gonna matter. And if it's really bad, then we'll deal with it. The other thing is materials. So I'm gonna do two different colors of cement. I've got iron oxide uh, dyes that I'm gonna mix in. So I've got two containers measured out with the vo approximate volume of cement that I'm gonna need, plus a little extra. I've got a face mask. Definitely use a respirator if you have one. I've got some water to mix into the cement, some popsicle sticks for stirring, and finally I've got cemental, which is a pretty fine cement mix. I also have a plasticizer. This is definitely not necessary, but it means that you don't have to add as much water to the cement mix, which makes it a bit stronger. I'm not really sure how critical that is in this case. Probably not. This is definitely not like a structural piece, but uh, I've got it, so I'm gonna use it. Cement is interesting in that it cures quite quickly if it's not being agitated. So you really only have 10, 15 minutes before it starts to set up a little bit. If you give it a good stir, you can pour again, but really you gotta work pretty quickly. The cure time, at least for the demolding, in my experience here was about 90 minutes to two hours. My rule of thumb was when it was cool to the touch or room temperature, it was good to go. Cement kind of heats up as it goes through its initial cure. So kind of 20, 30 minutes after it starts to warm, maybe a little bit longer depending on environmental conditions and the mix that you used. If it's cool and feels pretty solid, you should be good to go. The cement is cool to the touch and should be cured enough to demold. Our witness cups are rock solid. And we're gonna demold it and see how we did. All right. There it is. So the colors definitely just kind of combined in here. It's kind of a pretty solid gray, couple of blue tones, but it's pretty good. So we went from this to this, and I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so I just cleaned out the mold a little bit and we're gonna do another casting. That was very satisfying. So I'm pretty excited to try out another one. We're gonna do it a little differently in terms of the 
colors. I'm gonna stick one of them with just the natural cement color. So I'm not gonna add any coloring to it. The other one, I'm gonna do the blue and black combo to hopefully get a dark blue. Um, and I'm also gonna make them a little thicker this time, I think, which hopefully will keep the colors kind of separate so we get a bit more of a swirl rather than the single color where they're mixing up in the mold. But yeah, I don't know, we'll, we'll find out soon. Casting number two is cool and ready to be deep molded. So let's get it out and see what happened. Okay, what do you think? It's pretty cool. It's kind of marbly. These turned out pretty well. Mission accomplished. I think it's time to play around and have some fun with it. I haven't done this before, so I have no idea how it's gonna go, but I have some acrylic paints that we are gonna mix in there. Um, and we do some swirlies, little ombre thing, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to try it. And for this one, I'm thinking I do the natural cement and then mix in this like metallic royal ruby. Um, but not like a full mix in, just a little swirl. So yeah, I'm gonna put, I guess like a decent amount, but then only gently mix it in. It's like jelly. Let's just get it out and see what it looks like. See if there's anything we can learn from this. Yeah. Here is our coaster holder. Um, the metallic paint is kind of cool. I think I want to do that. Pretty cool. Okay, it's kind of interesting. It's definitely not my favorite. You could do all kinds of different stuff here. So, you know, use your imagination, get creative. And if you do end up making this or something similar to this, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to see what you come up with. And yeah, that's it for this project. I'll leave a complete list of materials that I use in the description. If you're curious if I ever make another video, then subscribe. <laughs> that way we can find each other. 